Hi everybody, it's Julie for EllenHudson.com and today I'm going to be doing a coffee themed card. I am playing around with the Latte Love Set which I adore. It's such a cute one but I wanted to create a little bit more of a sophisticated card with a black and white coffee theme. So I've grabbed some watercolor paper and this is Canson XL and I've cut it down. This is like half of a quarter sheet or a standard A2 so I cut it in half. And then this will enable me to mount that cup. This is the top-down view of the coffee cup to the lid. I'm going to ink up with some VersaFine Nocturne, uh, which is a black pigment ink. And then I'm going to stamp it a couple times. So I get two coffee cups because I figure if I'm going to do this, I might as well do a couple. So in case I screw up, I've got an extra. <laughs> I've got a spare coffee cup. So I'm going to pour some clear detail embossing powder. This one's by Wow over the top of that and just go ahead and emboss both of these cups and I like to toss it into a little paper plate here that has kind of a, a lip around the edge there so it doesn't get away from me and then I am uh, preheated my heat gun for about 30 seconds and I went ahead and uh, heated both those cups so they're nicely embossed and now I'm going to switch colors so I've grabbed a sentiment this one's thanks a latte from the same set and I'm going to mount that back to the center there of that cup and I'm going to ink up with some Versamark ink because I'm going to be using a different color of embossing powder. So initially when I stamped the cup, it was black pigment ink with clear embossing powder over the top. Now I'm using a clear embossing ink, which is Versamark, and then I'm going to put white detail embossing powder over the top of that. This one's um, by Stampendous, but there are a number of other white detail embossing powders, and I'll link to those in the description. Now I did have to preheat my heat gun for about 30 seconds so that I could come in very quickly and carefully heat just those words because I don't want to reheat the embossed cups and end up, you know, like frying that previous embossing into the uh, watercolor paper. So you do want to be careful when you're doing that. But now because it's been embossed, I can take some Zig Clean Color Wheel Brush Markers. This one's a nice dark brown and I just hug the embossing lines when I lay down my strokes of color and I don't want to get too crazy because this is a really dark saturated color and then I'm going to go ahead and blend that out with my water brush and because I embossed that sentiment there in white it's going to resist and kind of resemble you know like a foam foam art you know and you can do this with the other uh, images and characters in the set so to add some dimension to this cup one of my favorite things to do is to take some of these other markers that are in the soft paler shades and again I'm still working with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and this color is vanilla and I'm just kind of going around and adding some color there just a little bit I won't need to blend it out with the water brush because it's such a pale color and then to add some shading I've grabbed this blue haze it's a really nice kind of a grayish blue and I'm going around the base of the cup and anywhere else I think in real life I would have some shading to indicate, you know, this is a 3D effect. Now there are other ways that you could create this, but I just wanted to do it with my markers and have it all done and keep it um, for the most part one level because then um, I don't have to bulk up my card by layering too many things. Now I'm going to set that aside and work on um, the card front and this is a square or a, an A2 panel of uh, Essentials by Ellen. Uh, ebony cardstock. Is it ebony or is it nocturne? It's black. It's a deep rich black and I love it because it's a nice dark black. And then I prepped that with an anti-static patch because I'm going to be doing some embossing on that and I really do not want that powder sticking in stray spots. So now that I've got some washi tape on the back side of that, it's going to anchor it down onto my misty platform. And the reason I did this is I want to be able to uh, bleed off the edges and I can't use the magnets to hold that quarter sheet in place on the platform so I'm just going to um, anchor it there with the washi tape and I'm just creating a random pattern I'm rotating the cup and I'm using again Versamark ink which is a clear embossing ink and then I'm going to pour that detail white powder over the top of this and I have to hold this really carefully so that I don't smudge that embossing powder and just kind of get that whole thing coated nicely but inevitably, especially because it's winter and you've got a lot of static cling, there's still always a few little grains that will stick. So I have this really teeny tiny paintbrush I like to use to go get in there and get a couple of those stray speckles of embossing powder off that panel. And then I'm going to go ahead, preheat my heat gun again, and come in and heat emboss all those images. And the paper plate works spiffy for that so that I don't uh, burn my finger. Now I'm going to take... Uh, 
So this is a Swiffer cloth, and I like to use it to uh, buff off any of that residual anti-static powder because I want my cardstock to be a nice, rich black. So that powder kind of sticks on there until you buff it off with a with something. So that's a nice soft cloth to use. Those Swiffer things come in handy. Good, not just for sweeping your floor. So now I'm going to take that panel, and I've got an A2 card here. This is Mina Solar White 80 pound, and I put some foam adhesive on the back of that. And I partially put it on the black panel, and then I also put it on the white panel because I didn't want to have any of it overhanging by mistake and then end up cutting through it and wasting it. <laughs> I hate when I waste a product. So it's like, oh, I try to be careful and conscientious about where I'm putting my foam adhesive so I'm not whacking off any and wasting it. So now normally I take my big long blade scissors and whack off those edges, but I decided to try using my tonic paper trimmer. To be honest, it, it worked, but I can do it faster with a pair of long blade scissors <laughs> and just bump them up against the edge of the card there and just plow right through it. And I don't ever have any issues with it. But some people do, but um, I never have a problem with it. But you could try using your paper trimmer um, because you're really only cutting through that one thickness. Now I did coat my cup there with some glossy accents and it did dilute the coloring and shading that I put down there. So it's very pale and it was hard to pick up on camera. But I think it's a really great way to get dimension on a two-dimensional piece of art. I hope you enjoyed this and you'll give it a shot. And thanks for watching.